states of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. All right, can we please start with a roll call? Council President O'Halloran. Here. Council Member McIrvin. Council Member Prince. Here. Council Member Perez. Here. Council Member Vaughn. Here. Council Member Alberson. Here. And Council Member Rivera. Roll call, Mr. Mayor, two absent. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council President O'Halloran. I move the council excuse the two absent members. Second. It's been moved by Council President O'Halloran, seconded by Council Member Prince, that the absent uh, council members be excused. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, motion carries. And we're going to start the evening off with a proclamation for Parks and Recreation Month. Proclamation, whereas the United States House of Representatives has designated July as Parks and Recreation Month, and the city of Renton acknowledges and appreciates the benefits derived from parks and recreation professionals and resources. And whereas parks and recreation is an integral part of communities throughout the country, including the city of Renton, and encourages physical activities by providing hiking trails, swimming pools, dance, art, summer camps, space for popular sports, and many other activities uh, designed to promote active lifestyles. And whereas parks and recreation is a leading provider of healthy meals, nutrition services, and environmental education that are critical to childhood development. And whereas parks and recreation and parks improvement projects increase the community's economic prosperity through increased property values, expansion of the local ta tax base, increased tourism, the attraction and retention of businesses, and crime reduction. And whereas our parks and natural recreation areas ensure the ecological beauty of our community and provide a place for children and adults to connect with nature and recreate outdoors. Now, therefore, I, Armando Pavoni, Mayor of the City of Renton, do hereby proclaim July 2023 to be Parks and Recreation Month in the City of Renton, and I encourage all residents to join me in this special observance and witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Renton to be affixed this 10th day of July, 2023, signed Armando Pavoni, Mayor of the City of Renton. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Halloran. I move the proclamation be adopted as read. Second. It's been moved by Council President O'Halloran, second by Council Mayor Prince, that the proclamation be adopted as read. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, motion carries. So we're fortunate in Renton to have some amazing parks. And tonight, to accept the um, proclamation, we have a number of people. Steve Myers, Colleen Hunsaker, Erica Schmidt, Carrie Nass, and Liz Stewart. So, Kelly, do we have somebody going to say a few words and we'll take a picture? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, Kelly Beamer, the Parks and Recreation Administrator. Um, as the mayor had just noted, this team does an amazing amount of work, a lot of hard work out in our neighborhoods, our parks, our trails, our open spaces, our events, um, programs, golf course, museum. They just uh, provide a lot for the public to enjoy. And so I'd like to bring them up individually just so you can see them, meet them. So Colleen Hunsaker is our tr Parks and Trails Director. We have Carrie Nass, our Recreation Director. Erica Schmitz is our Parks Planning Director. Elizabeth, sorry, Elizabeth Stewart is our Museum Manager. And Steve Myers is our Golf Course Manager. And certainly, last but not least, is Roberta Graver, our Administrative Assistant. So um, again, thank you to all of this team that, and their teams individually that provide all that work.
All right. Well, everybody gets settled down. Next up is the administrative report. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Morge floats on the south side of the North Water Walk at Jean Coulon Memorial Beach Park will be closed for construction on Monday, today, July 10th through Friday, July 14th. For everyone's safety, please follow directions on all posted signs. Mooring along the wall next to the pavilion shelter east of the Morge floats will still be available during this time. Contact Parks and Recreation Department at Parks and Rec at rentonwa.gov or call 425-430-6600 for questions or more information. Three surface water utility projects have been awarded Stormwater Financial Assistance Program grant funding in the total amount of $11,131,600. The three projects are the Monroe Avenue Northeast Infiltration Facility, Southeast 172nd and Southeast 172nd Street Water Quality Retrofit, and the Springbrook Terrace Water Quality Retrofit. The latter grant is a design grant, while the former two are construction grants. Uh, congratulations, surface water. Information about preventative street maintenance, traffic impact projects, and road closures happening this week can be found at rentonwa.gov forward slash traffic. All projects are weather permitting unless otherwise noted. Streets will always remain open. That's All it. right. Thank you very much. So we're on to audience comments. Uh, we do have a number of people signed up today to um, address the council. When I call your name, please step up to the podium. You'll have three minutes. There's a timer right in front. When it turns yellow, it means you have just a few uh, few more seconds left. And please wrap up your comments because we do have a number of people today. So um, also, when you come to the, the podium, please give your name. For the record, give your name, city of address, and what you'll be speaking on today. And so first up is uh, Brian Omelik. Omelik. My name is Brian Omelik, and I live in uh, the Kennedale neighborhood of Renton. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the City Council, thank you for allowing me to address you today. I stand before you to discuss a matter of great importance to our community. The vacating of a platted alley on 31st Street in Kennedale. The alley, dating back to 1904, has remained undeveloped and has become more of a liability to the city than a benefit. If the lines had been drawn a mere three months later, the right of way would have automatically been dissolved after remaining unused. As it stands, the alley remains an anachronism, providing no benefit for a neighborhood already equipped with front access homes. I firmly believe that by vacating this alley, both the city and its residents can achieve a mutually beneficial outcome. First and foremost, it's crucial to acknowledge that the Plata Alley, while established many years ago, has never been constructed. Its presence on the city's books poses a burden, both financially and administratively. By vacating this alley, we can relieve the city of this unnecessary liability and ensure a more accurate representation of our community's infrastructure. Moreover, by vacating this alley, the city stands to gain increased property tax revenue from the developed parcels, contributing to the financial growth and stability of our city. In light of these positive prospects, I propose that the City Council consider charging 0% of the appraised land value for the street vacation following the precedent set when other nearby alleys were vacated in the same neighborhood. This decision would not only uphold fairness, but also eliminate a financial obstacle to achieving this advantageous outcome for the community. By vacating the platted alley, we would relieve the city of a liability, preserve green spaces, and prevent unnecessary disruption of abutting properties. Additionally, I would like to draw your attention to a pressing matter. There's a building permit on 31st Street that threatens to develop a portion of the platted alley. I kindly request that the City Council consider postponing the approval of this permit to allow us sufficient time to complete the street vacation process. By our view, the builder who is currently under a stop work order for unpermitted construction was and is attempting to sneak through development that will negatively impact our neighborhood without allowing time for public discourse. Namely, using the alley as a loophole to cut down mature trees, destroying green spaces enjoyed by multiple adjacent neighbors, all to put in a garage in the back of a home with existing front loading access. By providing this delay, we can demonstrate that a back alley on this property is not necessary as it already has front loading access, just like the rest of the neighborhood, and therefore won't create any undue burden on the builder. This will allow for a fair and comprehensive evaluation of the situation. And in conclusion, I urge each member of the City Council to carefully consider the proposal for vacating the Plata Dalley on 31st Street in Cunningdale, and let us seize this opportunity to create a positive impact on our community. By embracing this mutually beneficial action of street vacation, supporting our financial concerns, 
and postponing approval on the building permit, we can ensure the best interests of our community are served. Thank you for your time and attention. All right, thank you. And next up is Gretchen Wicks. Good evening, esteemed council members and Mayor Pavoni. My name is Gretchen Wicks, a 19 year resident of North 31st Street in Lower Kennedale. In my 19 years living in Kennedale, we have seen small cottages on big lots turn into two or three large houses filling shrinking lots. My own home lost a beautiful lake view to one of these types of large homes being made from a small cottage, all in the name of progress. Significant projects have been preceded by a large white proposed land use action sign announcing the opportunity for public input. I believe adding an alley to our, our block is a big change that deserves a public hearing. We've learned that vacation of a right of way requires a public hearing. However, to create an alley, there seems to be no such requirement. We deserve to see impact statements, civil engineering plans, and potential future costs to the residents. To date, none of this has been done, nor has any communication come from the city of Renton or the developer of the 1002 property. And we cry foul and request that our city as our city council, you put a stop to further work from proceeding to place an alley. Tonight, you're hearing public input on this proposed land use. Simply put, we do not want it. We are again before you to request vacation of the right of way between 31st and 32nd Street and not allow work to begin for placement of an alley on our block. Thank you for your consideration. All right, thank you. And next up is uh, Kim Lulius. Lulius. Hi, my name is uh, Kim Lulius. I've lived on North 31st Street for 19 years in Kennedale. Uh, it appears that the planning department is in the final stages of approving the alley access via LUA 23-00081 for the 1002 North 31st Street property under development, which was applied for on May 26, 2023. We are asking the city to deny approval for the following reasons. Granting access would allow this developer to get, cut down a thicket of mature cedar trees that would other, otherwise block the north view of the property at 1002. After several neighbors and I met with the developers and the neighbor with the trees, we concluded that the developer is seeking alley access for the sole purpose of clearing, clear cutting the trees to create a view and attain a potential higher sale for the new home. We have learned that the city offered the developer several opportunities to build this house, house with a front facing garage, removing the need for an alley altogether and still have a home with a view which he rejected. We have also learned that this developer, which who poured the foundation for this house, without a permit, was informed that he must rebuild the foundation currently due to improper setbacks, even with a, a rear alley access. I see big risk for the city and neighbors on the proposed project, which could include abandonment of the unfinished project based upon there's a pre-built incorrect foundation, large cost to build a quality alley, alley, and minimal increase in house value to add a northern view. The low risk approach is for front loading garage that will benefit everyone in the long term. The trees and existing backyards remain intact. The investors make a profit. The reality is the trees would likely be replanted and the new homeowners, homeowners purchasing the, with a view would eventually lose that view they paid for making this whole exercise moot. The Kennedale, Kennedale neighborhood wants trees. The city of Renton wants trees as well. Urban and city forestry at the city of Renton requires permission to remove trees according to tree regulations on the city's website, which also states large trees are a valuable environmental resource and worth preserving. We want to preserve these large trees that are our neighborhood. The developer seems to be acting in haste, making decisions that directly impact the people to the west and north without having discussions with them and cutting corners without considering risk. We again request that the city grant the neighborhood of Kennedale abandonment of the platted right of way between North 32nd and streets. We believe this developer is acting in haste with short sightedness without community input. Thank you. All right, thank you. And next up is Barry Conger. Thank you all for having me up here tonight. Um, 
this is a bit of a rehash of last month, but one, I want to comment on the, the parks and recreation here. They, they are number one in, in my area. And uh, we've had our grandkids all week and uh, have enjoyed Jean Coulon Park. And uh, my grandson asked, what's those signs for? And they said, because there were wasps signs on there. And uh, he realized he was standing in a wasp nest that he had walked under a red red ribbon to uh, to get to. So they're they're taking care of us. We're not always obeying the signs, but they're taking care of us. Right, um, will you state your name before you? Yes, my name is Barry Conger. I live at twelve seventeen North Thirty Second Street in the Lower Kennedale area. I would like to ask the City Council to place a stop action on any further development of an alleyway between 32nd and 31st streets impacting this neighborhood. It will adversely impact the culture and demographics for the area. It will degrade the security of the affected homes and surrounding ones as well. It will be done at the expense of removing a significant large stand of mature trees to accomplish this. It's my hope that the city will abandon any plans to the redesign and layout of our neighborhood. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Nothing good will become of this. Please grant our alley vacation request, uh, and I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. And next up is Leslie Jo Shaleen. Hi, my name I've been a resident of Renton for over 18 years now. Um, moved down here from Everett, and I, am, I love the area. Um, I'm here to talk about this Renton connector you have going or wanting to do down Bennett. Um, Claim that its vision for downtown is a place where people of all ages and abilities live, work, shop, recreate, and gather connected by art and public space. But why fix something that isn't already broken? Why force current taxpaying residents, business, businesses, and long-term service organizations for our veterans who served our country in our past foreign wars out of their meeting place or away from local businesses that our community already supports? The outrageous amount of money that are only preliminary estimates should be used to fix what has already been broken by our community and city, which is all these low-income housing that's been ripped apart and not rebuilt, you know. And uh, every day we hear about the increased criminal activity and homelessness within our community. I myself have been a victim multiple times as I work in downtown Renton because of these things. This money should be, be used to rebuild our community already tore down. We need to start by helping our community, by making our downtown area an even more safe place for our community members to work, shop, or receive the support that's not only necessary, but has already been shown to be a beneficial to our community. This connector will remove multiple parking spaces for current businesses current residences in a place our own veterans who risked their lives at four wars. Now these people will have to either walk multiple blocks just to enter the VFW or stop attending our weekly functions or activities that they really look forward to or receive the assistance through us. Our VFW has been available now for almost 90 years. Our veterans, our community members, their families, have had a safe place to go to be with other veterans to receive the support we as a nation promised our returning veterans when they return from war. They've risked their lives multiple times and to walk the distance they're asked to walk from a parking garage after they, they attend these functions is it's not fair. They're up there in age, they've got disabilities, they've got mental health issues that walking the streets aren't a safe place for anyone, especially them. You know, on the battlefield, 
The military pledged to our soldiers, no soldier would be left behind. Well, as a nation, or in our case, our community, we need to honor our veterans, not by leaving them behind, not by taking a place away from them. Just the thought of removing those parking spaces close enough for these veterans make me sick. I am a volunteer there. I am there to help support our veterans. There's members, I'm, without saying names, that are in this room right now, sitting right there, that is also there to help support our VFW and our veterans. They need this place. And ever since December 16, 1933, they've had this place. Shut your time. Your okay, they've had okay. this place. Please don't take it from them. All right, thank you. Next up is Nathan, uh, Nathan Yaman. Hello, uh, my name is Nathan Yamani, and I reside at the, my wife and I and our children reside at the Ashburn Condominiums in uh, Renton, Washington. My wife and I are current residents of Ashburn Condominiums in Renton, Washington. On March 28, 2023, we contacted Rich Sand at Morris Management and made reservations to use the cabana at Ashburn Condominiums for my wife's baby shower on May 20th, 2023. Rich Sand asked us to send a deposit check, which we did on March 29th, 2023. Morris Management cashed our check on April 4th, 2023. Our reservation form was received by the property management company and verified on March the 31st, 2023. I'd also like to note that on October 6, 2022, our landlord's property management company notified Morris Management Company the following. The owner has given, quote, the, the owner has given a standing okay for you to rent the cabana during your tenancy as long as you guys don't cause any damage, which we know you won't, end quote. Morris Management confirmed receipt of this notification and agreed to allow us to rent the cabana at uh, Ashburn Condominiums. On the day of the baby shower, my wife's par party at the cabana was rudely interrupted by the secretary of the HOA board for this condominium. She accused us of trespassing and not having a right to be there. She demanded that we immediately send her proof of our reservation, which includes the check that we wrote to Rich Sand and obviously has our bank account information. The email she said we needed to send our information to was her personal Gmail email account. We had to scramble to get all of our information to this stranger's not secure Gmail account so that we didn't get kicked out of the cabana. We also provided proof of the deposit check since the property management company has communicated to us uh, in the past that, quote, a valid confirmation includes a signed reservation form, a deposited check, and approval from the manager slash board, end quote. We were embarrassed, humiliated, deflated, and threatened. You only get to have one baby shower, and we will never get this event back. The board secretary created a huge safety risk for our friends, guests, and ourselves. We were policed and feared that the police would be called on us since we were accused of trespassing. It was a safety risk for us, also because the board secretary refused to leave. We couldn't verify if she was armed or not and had no idea as to her intentions. This incident ruined the baby shower for us. Being a black family with the majority of our guests being black, we felt targeted since the board secretary is white. I would also like to note that the fear of police being called on us was also based on the fact that black men are statistically at a higher risk more than any other demographic of becoming victims to police brutality. There were two black men, including myself, insisting with this baby shower, and there were there was legitimate fear of our safety. Generally speaking, both the black men and black women at this baby shower had cause for concern of their safety as the board secretary obviously labeled us as trespassers and saw us as a threat. And anytime you, see, you are seen as a threat, you see behavior like the board secretary's behavior being exhibited and police are almost always involved. Other residents of this condominium have informed me that they've reserved the cabana in the past and have never been policed, nor their event stopped, and nor have they been accused of trespassing. 
My wife and I contacted the HOA board on May 20th, 2023 regarding this incident. The HOA board president apologized by phone and email for the board secretary's react, quote unquote reaction, but nothing has been done to fix or remedy this incident for us. Alan from Morris Management Company, who manages the cabana, indicated to myself that the board secretary, quote, went rogue, end quote, after hearing about this incident. Allen stated that the board secretary should have contacted the property management company, Morris Management, to confirm our reservation and should not have approached us or our guests. Yet again, nothing has been done to remedy this incident. I would greatly appreciate the city of Renton's uh, council and any other pertinent city of rent uh, and any uh, and any other any and any other pertinent city of rent and council uh, sub council such as the public safety council to intervene or provide guidance regarding this incident. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next up is uh, Dutch Dusherman. Hi, I'm Steven Dutch Deutschman. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a... It says S. <laughs> yeah, I know I sneaked in the Steven on you. Mm -hmm. Left it as an S. Yeah. But I always go by Dutch, you know that. So I'm house and club chair for VFW, of course, and I was here two weeks ago to talk to you really quickly. Uh, this time I actually took some notes. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm unincorporated area renting, just so you know that. So I'm a lifetime member of the VFW. So the building that we're in currently, it was constructed 103 years ago in 1920. The VFW opened 90 years ago in 1933. Can we make it to 100 years, everyone? I would like to think so. Okay, we do support the community, believe it or not. From September to June, we provide, provide free meals to the communities uh, to the community on Wednesday. Anybody is welcome to come in to the hall and have a meal. We have clothing and, and toy drives for vets and children. We have something called the 21 Club where seniors of all kinds socialize once a month in our hall. Now remember, these are at no charge that we do these things. We have the Native American and Mexican Dance Club practice on Thursdays, FOC, that means free of charge. Once a month, we open the hall for Project Be Free. I'm sure everybody's heard of Project Be Free, right? It's an advocacy group for those often silenced by domestic violence and racial disparities. And I'll just read this from their website, and you can go on, go on to look yourself if you'd like. It says, every member of our staff and each of our board members are POC, people of color. All of our first responding MHPs, mental health providers, are trained in domestic violence advocacy and are licensed mental health workers. We acknowledge domestic violence survivors vary in gender. We connect with those in need with our carefully selected partnering organizations through these organizations. We're able to help both survivors and abusers. We work with clients in their homes and out in the community. So yes, we support the community, certainly do. And I think that's rather important. The uh, next meeting we have, and I'm, I'm gonna go over finances next meeting with you. So what we're gonna project what, what, what can happen to us uh, if we don't get together. I haven't heard from anyone in, since I last spoke here about discussion about what we could do together to work on this project. And I'll end here before I get the red light is, ask not what the veterans can do for you, ask what you can do for the veterans. Thank you, Dutch. Next up is Marie Roper. My name is Marie Roper, longtime resident of Renton. Mr. Mayor and City Council, you're getting a reprieve from me tonight. I'm not gonna yell and argue and bitch. I agree with the people of Kennedale. I live in Kennedale. No alleyways. I'm here with the VFW. No park 
You've got Tonkin's Park. You've got two parks past the VFW. Use those. You don't need to take the parking spaces away from the vets. Now, Mr. Mayor, my question is to you or the council, whoever can answer. Someone tell me where I can get information about all the apartment buildings going up where the Highlands shopping area used to be on Sunset. There's one big block of apartments going up. I think they're eight plus stories. There's an apartment building next to the library. There's apartment buildings behind the library where the housing department Rent and housing used to be big, huge apartment building going up and more. How many units are you building up there? Can somebody tell me that? Get that information for you. The one large unit, I believe, is 800 units. So, so we're talking almost 2,000 to 3,000 people up there. What is the impact going to be for traffic, for crime? My God, it's unreal. Can somebody answer that question for me? Who allowed all of this building? I mean, can't you spread it out throughout the town? Any answers? Help. This is your turn to talk. Okay. I hope that we make better decisions. I'm with Kennedale, I'm with the vets, and I'm for my neighborhood. Thank you. All right, next up is Jim McConte. McConville. Yep. My name is Jim McConville. I've been here since 1940, 83 years old. Yeah. <laughs> and I live in Kennedale. I'm very much against this alleyway that's been a proposed by a contractor for one person. There's the majority of the whole neighborhood, which is a beautiful neighborhood, well established and should be respected instead of torn apart. Uh, when I came here as a baby, and as I grew up, I think I was seven or eight years old, I can remember coming in from the valley where we used to pick strawberries and blueberries and beans and you name it, and they had a sign that said, you're entering Renton, 16,000 people. That's how long ago it's been. Now, why that somebody with little or care about Renton, which is a great city, and I have voted for 90% of everything that's been appropriated, schools, fire department, so on and so forth. Now, I would like for the city council to vote with me to throw this proposal for an alleyway between 31st and 32nd out. Thank you very much. Thank you. And next up is Ellis Beach Puch. Ellis? Ellis is not here. Ellis, oh, Ellis is here. Oh, Ellis Birch, okay. I'm Ellis Birch, and I also live on 31st in Lower Kennedale. So I just want to say I'm here to oppose the alley, too. It's going to go directly behind my house and take out the trees. And anyway, I'm just here to oppose the alley. Thank you. Ellis, and then uh, next up is Alex, and I cannot read your last name. Alex, I believe you're the last one to sign yeah, up. Zimmerman. Zimmerman. Yeah. Ah, Zimmerman. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <almost> shitless. 
Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, my name is Alex Zimmerman, and I am I live here more than thirty-five years. I am under social security, disabled, low income. Why I'm speaking about is about something what is I see, what has make my life a little bit miserable because for the last couple of years, most community, people of color, color or poor people, you know what is in have too many problems. And this problem go bigger and bigger. We pay for everything but us because of us income very low. So we have a ton of problem, and I think this more than fifty percentage right now everywhere. Speak yeah. up, please. What? We can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I will speak. So fifty percentage people right now in America have problem because we're very poor. Most of us disabled or people of color, and we have a problem. And where is problem come from? Problem comes from controlling, because people who control us right now, I call them a Democrat mafia. It's a pure fascism, what as we have right now. We cannot be back America, what is I come almost 40 years ago. Exactly. Situation very simple. I give you classic example. I go and speak sometimes in different location. So I go to Puget Sound, Regional Council. And when I start speaking, this always cut me. Yeah, and I try to understand why they're doing this, you know what it means? Because I'm no fascism, don't have a color, you know what it means? You can be every single, every color, what is you want. So uh, one time I speak about, so Seattle uh, uh, don't have black community. It's gone, totally, you know what it means? Yeah. And they cut me, who cut this, a, a, a consul, pri pri prince, you know what it means, cut me, you know what it means, why? Is exactly what's happened in Seattle right now. Amazon come 10 years ago. Price for everything double right now. Average price $2,000. 10 years ago, it's only 1000 bucks. So, and he cut me. Why? I speak about black community. I have maybe black, black, black blood in my when too. You know what this means? Who know what has happened for the last 3 million years? So, situation very simple. Why he cut me? because he's a democrat he not care about color what does he care is a support democratic mafia it's exactly what's happened look for forever right now what is around from governor you know what is mean to your city and i like you guys you're very nice you speak and you clapping it's very unusual i love you Exactly. So what is happening now? You know what is mean when black men stop me when I talking about problem. What is have black community, and I am right by hundred percent. Why he doing this? Why? Ask him why. Mr. My Jeff, time I need, gone. I need you to wrap up your comments. You're yes, uh, I don't see timer here. Sorry. Red Where light is right, in, right in front. No, let me know because next time I will come. Oh, guys, I am so sorry. Yeah, I very appreciate you. Okay, thank you. So there's a problem what is we have right now. It's not meant to be a problem, it's meant to be watched. Thank you very much. Okay, all right. Uh, we do have one person signed up virtually to speak. Um, and the voice in the cloud will talk to us in a minute. Mr. Mayor, we, we do have one person and that is Mark Peterson. Mark, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Mark. Great, okay. Um, esteemed mayor and council members, my name is Mark Peterson and I've been a resident of Lower Canadale for 20 years. I'm not in the room with you tonight because I'm camping with my family, but I feel this is such an important issue for my neighbors and I that I drove from my camping spot up in the mountains down to town to get some cell service so I could zoom in here. We are again requesting the city council vote to vacate the planted right of way between North 31st and 32nd streets and that the city grant the property to the property owners. A recent conversation with the economic development assistant director indicated that upon approval for abandonment, 100% compensation from all the abutting property owners by one payment 
source within 90 days would be required. If any of the property owners are not able, not able to pay, the whole vacation request is voided. We believe the city's requirement for compensation from 100% of the abutting properties is unreasonable. Fulfillment would be impossible because not 100% of the abutting property owners have agreed to participate. I think we're at about 83% right now. Um, payment of the fee by one payment source within 90 days is also unreasonable, given that there are approximately 41 properties impacted by this vacation petition. As a city council, you know how difficult it is to get 100% of a large group to agree on anything, especially involving a lot of money in a short period of time. Previous alley vacations in Kennedale were accomplished at 0% compensation, as evidenced by records of previous alley vacations within Kennedale. And um, Kim Lulius, who already spoke, has copies of those records and can pro provide them to the city clerk and you can see those. We would also argue that to require payment for this strip of land would therefore be considered disparate treatment towards the abutting property owners on 31st and 32nd. I wanted to point out that the city of Renton received this property as part of an annexation when Kennedale was annexed into the city of Renton in the 1960s. As Kennedale neighbors, we encourage you to do the right thing and grant our alley vacation request. Thank you, and we look forward to hearing your decision. All right, thank you, Mark. Enjoy the rest of your vacation. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> okay, that's everybody that's signed up to speak. Hopefully we didn't miss anyone. Um, we are on to the consent agenda. There are nine items for council consideration. Are there any that council would like pulled? Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Council President O'Halloran. Hearing none, I move the council approve the consent agenda as published. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council President O'Halloran, second by Council Member Prince, that the council approve the consent agenda as published. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, motion carries. We are on to unfinished business, Council President O'Halloran. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Prince. Yes. yes, the Planning and Development Committee has a committee report. All right, the Planning and Development Committee committee report. Uh, this is regarding uh, 2023 Title IV, Docket 18, Group B. The Planning and Development Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to approve the 2023 Title IV, Docket Group 18B, which is Docket Item 227, Impact Fees. The Planning and Development Committee further recommends that an ordinance for this item be prepared and presented for first reading when it is complete. This is signed by a uh, member and substitute member. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council Member Prince. Move Council concur with the Planning and Development Committee committee report. Second. Okay, it's been uh, moved by Council Member Prince, seconded by Council Member Perez, that the Council concur with the Planning and Development Committee report. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. That's all, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you. Councilmember Perez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Finance Committee has two committee reports to present. Hey, the Finance Committee committee report approval of claims and payroll vouchers. Finance Committee approves following payments. Accounts payable, uh, total payment of $6,494,066.81 for a number of vouchers, payroll benefit withholding vouchers, and two wire transfers. And two, payroll total payment of $1,888,889.49 for uh, payroll vouchers, including 714 direct deposits and 39 checks. This is the June 1st through 15th pay period. And this is signed by the committee chair and members. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Councilor Perez. I move that the council concur with the, committee, the finance committee committee report. Second. It's been moved by Councilmember Perez, second by Councilmember Alverson, that the council concur with the Finance Committee report. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. All right, the next Finance Committee report is regarding the authorization to purchase fleet vehicles. The Finance Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to approve the purchasing agreement with uh, Pape Kenworth Northwest Washington State 
Oh, using Washington State contract number 05916 for three public works dump vehicles totaling $1 million three dollars or one million three thousand six hundred forty seven dollars even in accordance with uh, washington state big contract number zero five nine one six and approve the additional one hundred and forty thousand from street fund zero zero three and forty thousand from the water fund 405 for the balance of the needed funds uh which will be included in the second quarter budget amendments this is signed by the committee chair and members mr mayor Press. I move that the council approve the finance committee community report. Okay, it's been moved by Councilor Press, second by Councilor Alberson. Did the council concur with the finance committee report? Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. That's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank All you. All right, thank you. Councilmember Van. No unfinished business. Right. Council Member Alberson. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Council Member is not here. Okay, we're done with that. <laughs> All right, legislation, we have none, so we're on to new business. Council President O'Halloran. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. On Monday, July the 17th at 5 p.m., the Committee of the Whole will be uh, held in the conferencing center and via video conference. We have one item on the agenda. It's Great City Council Meetings Workshop, and I encourage all members to attend in person with our colleagues for this one. And on Monday, July 17th at 7 p.m., here in Council Chambers and via video conference, we'll have our regularly scheduled council meeting. And that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilor Prince. Uh, no, uh, no new business, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Council Member Perez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On Monday, July 17, 2023, at 3.45 p.m., the Finance Committee will meet uh, in the Council Conference Room and also via video conference. There are six items on the agenda, 2023 Second Quarter Budget Amendment Ordinance and 2023-2024 Fee Schedule Resolution. Also, contract award and funds transfer request for 2022-2023 Traffic Calming Lake Washington Boulevard North. Third is agree agreement with King County and the Hazardous Waste Management Program for the local Hazardous Waste Management Program grant funds for 2023 and 2024. Fourth, establishment of a transportation benefit district. Fifth, parts and recreation temporarily event permit fee waiver request and finally emerging issues in finance and on behalf of council member uh, ryan mckeerbing i will announce that on monday july july 17 2023 at 1 15 pm the transportation committee will meet in the council conference room as well as via video conference there are three items on the agenda one two temporary total closures of northeast 44th street second 2024-2029 six-year transportation improvement pro program and finally amendment number one to CAG 23-128 with Century West Engineering for the taxiway alpha Re rehabilitation. I will add to this agenda emerging issues in transportation. Thank you, Mr. Major. All right. Thank you, Councilor Van. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Public Safety Committee has um, a meeting on July 17, 2023 at 2 p.m. Uh, via conference council, uh, council conference room uh, and via video conference. We have two items on the agenda. Uh, one, our RFA briefing and two, emerging issue in public safety. On behalf of Council Member Rivera, uh, for Committee Services Committee. Uh, we will be having um, a meeting on July 17, 2023 at 2.45 p.m. via video conference um, at the Council Conference Room as well. Uh, there are two items on the agenda. One, gift of play update. Two, ADA accessibility slash Kennedale Beach Park update. Thank you. All right, thank you. Council Member Alberson. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, the Utilities Committee meeting uh, that was scheduled on July 17th, Monday, July 17th, has been canceled. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Well, with all our business taken care of, what's the wish of the council? Move, we adjourn. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council Member Prince, second by Council President Halloran, that we adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone want to stay, say no. 
We're adjourned. Have a good evening, everyone.